So it's been confirmed in the past few moments from his family that the Brazilian football icon Pele has died at the age of 82. His daughter Kelly Nascimento confirmed the news on Instagram in the past few minutes with a picture of the family hand in hand with the legend saying everything we are is thanks to you. We love you infinitely. Rest in peace. It ends, of course, his battle with cancer, which had been ongoing for the past couple of years. And he'd been in hospital in uh, Sao Paulo for the last number of days uh, to treat his cancer, which had progressed, according to doctors, uh, over the course of the last while. And we will pay tribute to uh, a man who has shaped a lot of people's involvement in football over the course of the last 50 years, a man who won three World Cups, the first of those as a teenager in 1958 in Sweden. He went on to be the absolute star of the show in 1970 as he wrapped up, essentially, his international career there. Scored a 1,000-plus career goals. He graced Irish shores as well, playing at Daly Mount Park uh, against the selection there back during the, uh, the 70s with Santos and left an indelible impression on not only the world of football, but also the world of sport as a whole. Fingers crossed uh, we'll be able to check in uh, with John Giles, who obviously would have come across uh, the great that was Pele during the course of his career as well. But that sad news reaching us this evening in the past few moments, that Brazilian icon Pele has died at the age of 82. If you want to get in contact with your uh, memories of Pele, indeed, if your memories of watching him, if you're even a massive Escape to Victory fan, as I have been for the past uh, 30 odd years, uh, by all means, give us a shout. 53106 for 30 cent is the text number tonight. You can tweet us at Off the Ball. We'll be delighted to uh, hear from you. Uh, we will start off uh, the news round, which is brought to you with thanks to Gillette for an effortless finish to your day. Cahill Milani has joined us uh, in studio. Cahill, um, that sad news, obviously, aside, it's been a, a typically busy festive day in terms of sport and we'll start off with what we had at uh, Leopardstown today. Yeah, that's right, Richie. And a good day once again for Willie Mullins at Leopardstown with two grade one successes. State Man took the honours in the feature. The Matheson hurdle, Paul Townend, was on board to guide the five-year-old to victory in Sharjah who was bidding for a fifth successive win in the race, finished in third. Mullins and Townend also enjoyed a notable win in the grade one Neville Hotel's Novice Chase. Gaillard de Manil took the honours there and the race, though, was marred by the fatal injury injury sustained by both unexpected depth and three stripe life. Uh, we also heard from Jurgen Klopp today, Carl, because obviously enough they've had um, a, a new arrival, or he will be certainly a new arrival come January 1st. Uh, we'll get to the pronunciation of his surname perhaps in a moment. But that man from PSV has been the subject of uh, Jurgen Klopp's, uh, the crooks Jurgen Klopp's press conference today. Yeah, he says he won't rush Cody Gakpo to settle in after signing the Netherlands international from PSV. The forwards move was confirmed last night for a free fee which could be as high as €50 million. Euro. Manchester United were also thought to be interested, but Klopp says it was clear he wanted to join Liverpool. Wurz was involved from a specific moment on, um, but we didn't tell him, talk to him, because there was no reason for it. When, when I was allowed to speak to him, I spoke to him, and um, that, yeah. Was, it was, it was of these, some of these nice moments when you are Liverpool man, the manager of Liverpool FC, and you, run, you re realise you think you have to convince somebody, and then you realise during the talk, oh, the door is wide open. So this is more or less a home run, um, and it was, it was cool then. Um, so we didn't need Virgil. To, to to convince him um, and but after that obviously virtuous anyway likes to be involved in these kind of things and from a specific moment on he had to say as well but all good uh, Agent Virgil in the works there as well uh, in terms of his defensive partnership it looks like there's good news for Liverpool there as well yeah, Ibrahim Kanate is available for the meeting with Leicester City tomorrow. The Kanate has returned to training following his efforts at the World Cup with France and is in contention to be involved tomorrow. But Klopp stated that while his squad had come through unscathed following that win over Aston Villa on St. Stephen's Day, the players who missed that game, Roberto Firmino, Curtis Jones and James Miller, won't be back for tomorrow's match. Uh, there is football obviously ongoing tonight. No action in the Premier League. That will resume at the weekend, but certainly in the Championship we've got action this evening. We do, and one of the games is just past the 50th minute mark. QPR nil, Luton 2 is the latest score from the early kickoff. A number of matches then, five in total underway from 7.45. Blackburn entertain Middlesbrough. Coventry take on Cardiff. Huddersfield host Rotherham. Millwall meet Bristol City and Wigan go up against Sunderland. At uh, 8 o'clock tonight, West Brom take on Preston. And then at 8.15, Sheffield United take on Blackpool. 
and a win there for Sheffield United. We'll see them move level on points with the leaders Burnley if they can get all three points in that encounter. Uh, we've got John Giles standing by obviously on the breaking news this evening that uh, Pele has passed away at the age of 82 but before you go Carl just bring us up to date with what's happened at Ali Pali today. Well it's been a dramatic day uh, Richie and Dirk van Dijvenboide of the Netherlands is one of the players through to the last 16. He got the better of England's Ross Smith by four sets to three after that match went to a tiebreaker leg. There was a record 31-180s scored in that match and Van Dijvenboide will play Michael Van Gerwen in the next round. Former champion Rob Cross also in contention for another title. He was a 4-1 winner over Mervyn King today. Cross set to play Chris Doby in the next round and Stephen Bunting got the better of Dave Chisnell by four sets to two. Three matches down for decision tonight. Josh Rock on stage in the final match of the night against Johnny Clayton. Before that, Josie D'Souza takes on Gerwin Price, the world number one, and getting underway in the next few moments is the meeting of Vincent van der Voort and Luke Humphreys. Uh, Carl, uh, abbreviated though, uh, has been tonight. Thank you so much for uh, stepping you, in and uh, bringing us the news round. Uh, as we say, the big story of the day though and the big story of the evening, of course, breaking in the past 10 minutes or so, <clears throat> and that being that Pele has passed away at the age of 82. Now, for full uh, transparency, we had spoken to uh, to John Giles a little bit earlier on uh, just about the week's Premier League action and, and what had been ongoing. Don't worry, that's that's going to still come uh, this evening. But John has been so kind as to rejoin us uh, to talk about this breaking news uh, tonight. And John, desperately sad news. And it's hard to really comprehend a world without Pele because to many, for many people, for so long, he was the very embodiment of football. What did you... What were your impressions of Pele down through the years and, and, and where does he rank for you in terms of the world's greats? Well, it's <clears throat> sad to hear the news, uh, Richie. Uh, I don't think there was anybody better than him. Let's put it that way. Yeah, He was as good as any... What I found with all the great players, uh, Richie, none of them are the same. You know, if you look at Messi today, you look at Ronaldo, uh, you know, all these great players over the years... They're, they're, none of them are similar. They all have their own individual greatness, and Pele certainly had that. He was, he was. I mean, he was in my time. Uh, yeah. Well, I never played against him, but I, but I, I, I'll, I'll tell you a story. I met him one time, but uh, you know, he was only seventeen when he played in the World Cup and won it. I think he won it three times. Yeah. And he was brilliant. I mean, he wasn't a very big fella. But his head was brilliant. I mean, he was a real striker. You know, he was beautifully balanced, great head of the ball, great shot of the ball in both feet. And a really, I think, a really first class uh, individual team player. The, <clears throat> the comparisons, obviously, to, to modern day players and modern day greats are <clears throat> almost a bit futile. But I was looking last night, there was um, <clears throat> a 17-year-old came on and scored for, for, for Monaco and, and is obviously going to be one of these talents that we speak about in terms of in the coming years um, that, uh, that they could obviously go on to be one of the, the world's greats. But that's a measure, I guess, of, of how good Pele was, is that you have 17-year-olds who will break through into first teams now and they're kind of coddled as they need to be because they're still only kids and you need to look after them and make sure they're making the right kind of progress. He was a 17-year-old on whose shoulders uh, an entire country the size of Brazil were resting the World Cup hopes on in, in 58. That's how good he was from a very young age and I think that can often get lost in the midst of time is that he was that good and formed brilliant partnerships with the likes of uh, Garincha uh, and, and plenty of others that would have been in that side building from the disappointment that he would have seen. Famously, he told his own father who was crying when they lost that final game of the 50 World Cup against Uruguay. Uh, when his father was in tears as much as the country was at that yeah. stage that don't worry dad I'm going to go on and win a World Cup for you for him to do it just eight years later and while still technically a child oh, it's just remarkable yeah, he, it's not something he, that I don't think we'll ever see again no well maybe but it, it won't it won't be coming every every year that's for sure yeah. uh, Richard you know he, he like he he got the first one when he was 17 he scored I think and he was he was brilliant yeah. but then, then he, he, I think it was Obviously, he scored in his third one as well. The Seventy, yeah. That was in that was in Mexico, wasn't it? Surely was, yeah. Yeah, I was actually I was at that match. I, I was at anyway for one reason or other. I was at, I was at the tournament that that year, and uh, he, he was brilliant. He was he was beautifully balanced, great header of the ball. Yeah, funny enough, great header of the ball, but a real team player. Uh, uh, you know what I mean, Richie? He could, was, li could link playing a thing away that was probably ahead of his time. Oh yeah, he yeah. was he was just. But, you know, when you talk about a great player, 
They can do things that nobody else can do. Yeah. We saw Messi this season, uh, this year, well, a few weeks ago, uh, in the World Cup, doing things. And he's, I think, what is he, 36, 37 now? Yeah. The, you know, the, the, these guys are just exceptionally good, making a difficult game. Football is a very difficult game. People will tell you, you know, football is a simple game. It's not a simple game. It's, it's, it's a very... Uh, Certainly not a simple game. But what the great players do, like Bally and Messi, what they do is they make it look simple. Yeah. It's like yeah. a great artist, you know, a painter. You watch it with great artists. Well, I've never had them, but I believe you watch a great artist doing his painting. You say, Jesus, I could do that myself. <laughs> Till you try it. Mm. And great players are like that, you know. They, they make a very complicated game look simple. He, he, was, he, was, he was one of the greats. And yeah. we've had greats come along, you know. We see them, and none of them are none of them are the same. But he was a great. He was only seventeen when he won his first international, sorry, the World Cup. Yeah. And then went on to win it what three times, I think. Yeah, sixty-two. Uh, he won it with them uh, in Chile, and then obviously in seventy in Mexico, and he was essentially coaxed back uh, to be part of the team one last time and to try and get that yes. third World Cup uh, for Brazil and for. For himself, yes. I didn't know that you were at that tournament with Mexico, John, in seventy. Like, yeah, what what it was? It was a peculiar thing. There was a, there was a, a magazine, a football magazine, were running a, a a competition. Yeah, and the competition was that they 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 put up a, a certain amount of players, say in, in midfield in my position, and then people could write in, and if their choice came through, they got a, a, a trip to Mexico. But so did the player that they picked. Right. So the, I, I was picked by so, so a group of lads, I think, for, well, a, a family from Belfast. And Billy Bremner was picked. It was from Leeds. For, so we, we had a, a free trip to, uh, to Mexico, uh, which, which, which was brilliant. You know, it was a great experience to, yeah. to go and see, see all the matches and you know, see Pelle scoring the header. And, uh, so that, that's, that's what I was doing there. But the other experience I had when I was home for uh, one of the international matches in, in Dublin where sure. we were playing, and when I was player manager, and he was doing some, he was in Dublin, and he was doing some com- commercial uh, business, and whoever he was doing the business took him out to our training camp. Well, it wasn't a training camp, but I think we were training up at Black, uh, Black Rock College, uh, and he brought Paddy along to, to get some photographs taken. And uh, I got uh, chatting to him a little bit. You know, his English was very good. Yeah. And uh, I, I said, would you never go into management? And he said, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but he was, he, was, he, was, he was brilliant. He was humble. He was taking the photographs, got it done. And he was a real ex-player. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He, seemed like, um, he seemed like a statesman for the game before that really became a thing. Like, oh, he, yes. he, was, he was the kind of guy who... Would have had a lot of commercial attachments to him. He would have been one of the one of the first players to have that. I know Puma yes. were on board him pretty early on, but he yes. seemed to take on that role that certain players do, whereby they go around almost spreading the gospel of football. They don't want to uh, bog themselves yeah, down. He, in, he in was management. like that. Yeah. But, but all these all, all these players, where I could see all of them, loved him. Yeah, which is always a good sign, you know. I mean, there's certain great players and the the the, the, the fellow players. Were, yeah, he's great, but he's a bit of a shit, you know. To be quite <laughs> honest, but but Pele was. Uh, was, was, I think he was a team player. He was pally with the players. He had a fairly difficult situation, I think, in Brazil uh, with the politicians. Yes, yeah. They, there was uh, famously, I think it was, John, that obviously there would have been interest in him from abroad, but such was the political nature and the fact that the military were involved there <clears> in the late 60s and early 70s is that they <clears> wouldn't <throat> let him go. And like you would have known from, from playing, in the, playing in the States, he was the guy who essentially got the NASL up and oh, running, yeah. you know, and, and, and it yeah. took a lot of, I think, political manoeuvring to yeah. allow him to move to the United States yeah. and they had to get yeah. involved with government kind of talks and all that kind of stuff. So he was almost, he was stuck in Brazil to a degree. He couldn't go off yeah. and play in Europe during the course of his play, the regular playing yeah. days while he was still there, but managed to get out in, in the 70s and, and spread the gospel to America. Yeah. And you, would, you would have seen the kind of after effects of, of what he did over there in that country too. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, actually I, I played. I played in America around that time yeah. when he was playing there. I didn't. I didn't play against him. But but his, his biggest problem in Brazil, uh, sorry, in, in yes, in Brazil, uh, Richie, was that 
he couldn't he didn't want to be seen to be part of the whatever government they had over there yeah it was a tricky position do you know what i mean he never put his he put his uh, hat in in the ring with them he kept apart mm. which, which wasn't easy you know because a lot of people didn't like him as as, as we went out from the history of it uh but he was he was he was he was brilliant, and I think he was. I saw a documentary about him fairly recently, and it was a documentary with himself and his old players, right together. I think they were having a drink and and that. But you could tell by the 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 the, the attitude of the old players to him, he was one of the lads. Yeah, they loved him. They respected him. But it was also also a, a, a genuine love. Of him as an individual, and uh, he, he was he was great. He was great. Whatever greats we've had, and a lot of people wouldn't have seen Pel- Pelly, uh, but with all the greats we've had, they're all di- they all they're all different. They're definitely all different. But he was up there with whatever one uh, is considered the best in the what in what he did. I, th- I think that's um, that's a difficult position that we find ourselves in terms of history. Is that we're now losing these connections to that past like the yeah. physical connections and you'd be counted among that because you would have had the the, the, the luck and the good fortune to, to catch him live and to see him live like give us a sense of what it was like to watch him at that 1970 World Cup where you know he's in his imperious phase there and he's that, that World Cup for all he's done great up until that point that was his coronation that was the point where he sailed off into the sunset on, on the shoulders of a bunch of fans yeah. in the Azteca as you know, enshrined as the greatest ever, um, you got to see him in that arena. What was it like? Yeah. Well, he was he was just great. He was he was an all round player. He could hold the ball up. He could score goals. He was a good head, great head of the ball. Funny yeah. enough, uh, uh, Richie, you know, because he wasn't a big fella. He wasn't you know he's only about I'd say six foot eight. Uh, sorry, five foot eight. But but it's it, it, it's it's what he left obviously left behind it worldwide. I think in the third. Uh, World Cup, where he, where he was, he was coming near the end of his career. I think at that time he didn't. I think he came out of retirement or whatever at that time. He was coaxed out, I think, yeah, by the authorities in Brazil. Just give him so one more go. He, yeah. Like he had to play in it, but I think he wanted to finish uh, at that particular time before the World Cup. Mm. So it was a bit of a strain for him. He was coming near the end of his playing days at that particular time. But 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 obviously he played. He played for his country. He played for his, his fellow fellow players, and. Came out on on a on a big high, yeah. you know, couldn't be couldn't have been higher, and and that's why he was loved by by Brazil, having done what he did with through his career, to go to and play in three World Cups, finals and winners. Uh, but I think I, I mean obviously I didn't know him. I met him, but he seemed a very very uh, humble individual, not nothing big headed about him in any ways, and that's always a sign when when I did see the documentary fairly recently. Where the players that he played with showed their affection for him. Yeah, one of the remarkable things that we would never get now is like p- players can become such attractions. Like we can watch, you know, the Bundesliga. We can watch Serie A. We yeah. can watch La Liga. We can see Neymar. We can see Vinicius Junior. Mm-hmm. We can see Lionel Messi week in and week out on their TV screens, and it's it's uh, it's almost routine, and we kind of take mm-hmm. it for granted. Whereas players of Pele's generation, the way a lot of people actually got to see them was every four years at a World Cup yeah. or we had these remarkable things whereby um, when he was at Santos and latterly as well, I think New York Cosmos did a few touring games. So basically you'd have, because of him, mm. the team would go on tour around the world That's so right, that yeah. the public can go and get a look at him. And he actually... I think it was in 72, played in Daily Mount Park against uh, was a Drumcondra 11 or a combined 11 mm. from teams within the vicinity. So this is how play- people in the day would have gotten to see yeah. these players in the, those rare occasions up close is that they'd almost be brought on tour like a touring act, like a concert act would be. It was, it was, it was to make money as well. Yeah. <laughs> in a big way because yeah. he could... Actually, I went to see him at Sheffield when I was at Leeds when he was on, on his tour. Yeah. You know, but it, but that was a real money maker because they were playing morning, noon, and night. You know, uh, but I think I think I haven't watched it yet. But I think there is a documentary out about him. Yeah, I'd say there's a few at this stage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there will be more now. Of course. Yeah. But, but I think that I think there is one on Netflix or something uh, about him. But yeah, 
mean, anybody that's listening, if they want to go and see one a great player, try and get one of these documentaries. He was, uh, he, he was, he, he was the boss. He was the man. Yeah, he 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 certainly seems to be. Um, mm. it, it's almost a futile exercise to kind of compare different eras because everyone's different, and he would have played on ploughed fields much as yourself. Um, but like, he was always spoken about. Like when I was growing up, it was you know, is Maradona as good as Pele? But Pele yeah. is still and will be, I guess, always be that yardstick. And um, because there were so many different facets to his career, and it stretched mm-hmm. on for you know, 20 years essentially when he eventually went off into the sunset in the mid 70s in the US and yeah. like like you say, kind of spreading the gospel of, of football oh, worldwide even into his latter years. He was a hero years. In, in, in Brazil winning, winning the, the World Cup like mm-hmm. he did. But the likes of Maradona and, and we, we see Messi now, Messi and uh, uh, Ronaldo. I mean, people see in most of those and, and what you'll notice with them all, they're all different in the way that they play. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean, Richie? They're different styles. They're not the same. Maradona is different to... to to Messi even and, and Ronaldo, uh, but they're, they're they're great in their own individual way. Yeah, you know none of them are like Pelly. And Pelly wasn't like any of the others. But they're just great at what they have and what they do and what they bring to the team. Yeah. they just have this greatness in them that stand out. You know, and uh, Pelly certainly stood out because I don't know of any of them. Any of the great players have won three. World uh, Cups. World Cups. There's, there's, there's very few countries have won three World Cups, never mind <laughs> players uh, winning three World Cups, uh, not necessarily on their own, but certainly having those winners' medals yeah. to their names. Uh, listen, John, sorry for catching you on the hop with this one, but obviously... Uh, uh, no have, problem. Have I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry the, the, the poor, poor Pelé has, has, has passed away, but uh, I'd be delighted to talk about him anytime Richie it's my privilege absolutely John it's our privilege as well to check in with you and uh, we're going to have more from John momentarily but for now John Giles there on the life of the great Pele who has passed away this evening at the age of 82